All right, this is lesson 10, synthetic division. This is a continuation of long division in, uh, from last week, so it's a shortcut. Um, and you're going to find it a lot easier than last week. It only works on particular problems. It doesn't work on all the problems, but you're gonna, you'll notice on how we do that today. Here are the steps. So you have those written down. If you're on the video, please pause it now, and I'm going to move on. Okay, so... Here we go. Divide using synthetic division. Whenever I have a problem, a long division problem, I want to make sure I can use synthetic division. So on this particular problem, I can because the divisor has a coefficient of 1. has a coefficient of 1 right here. If it was a different coefficient before the x or the letter or the variable, then we couldn't use it. But since there's a coefficient of 1, we're good. Okay, we're golden. The form of our divisor has to follow x minus a, and this a is a variable. It could be any number. So in this particular one, a is equal to 9, okay? So in the back of my head, I'm thinking that. So I know I can use synthetic division here. Also, the directions tell me use synthetic division. Then I want to make sure, are, are my terms in descending order? They are. They go from x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and constants, okay? So since that's the case, I'm going to write down my coefficients. So the coefficient for x to the fourth is 1. So you got 1. Watch carefully up here right now. Negative 11. The next coefficient is 19. Next coefficient is negative 16. Next, co next coefficient is 63, which is our constant. Okay? You all follow me so far? Okay? Because last week we wrote all this like x cubed, x squared, over and over, and someone thought, Let, there's an easier way to do this instead of writing all that. Then we figure out what we identified as a. a is equal to 9, which is x minus 9. So this is our a. So, uh, even though it says minus 9, a is still 9, which is positive, okay? And we're going to look into that in a few weeks here, why that's that. Okay, since we wrote down all the coefficients, then this is what you do. You write this down, you draw a line, and then you take the first term, you bring it down, and then you put a 1 here. And then we multiply. 1 times 9 is 9, and we put a 9 here. Then we have negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. Okay. 19 plus negative 18, or 19 minus 18, is positive 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Put the 9 here. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7. Negative 7 times 9 is negative 63. Okay. Negative 63 plus 63, or 63 minus 63 is 0. Okay. And this last number would be our remainder. Since there's no remainder, we don't have to worry about it. The second number here from the remainder is our constants. Okay. That's the constant term. So now once we have all our new coefficients, this is what our answer is. So we have to rewrite it as a normal polynomial, so the second term is always our constant. What's the second term always called? Constant, right? So we're going to write this down, negative 7, then we have positive 1x, or we're going backwards now, so it's going to be positive x, then minus 2x squared, and then we have positive x cubed with a 1 in the front, but since that's a 1, we, let's just leave it alone, okay? And that's it. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Can we still use the other? You can still use the other way. This way is faster, though. If you did the other way, you would still have the same answer, okay? So this is foreign, meaning it's new to you. But once you get this, this is going to make your homework go faster, believe me. Okay? So again, what did I just do? Okay, what did I just do? Again. I figured out what my a was. a is 9. Then I wrote down all my coefficients in order. Okay. Then I brought down the first term, which was 1. 1 times 9 is 9. You always go from top to bottom. You just add negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus, times 9. You always multiply from here to here. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. 19 plus negative 18 is 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7. Negative 7 times 9 is negative 63. 63 minus 63 is 0. Okay. Following me? Yeah. If we had one with uh, x 
X to a four, D third, and it skipped all the way to a just X. Sure then you have to put place markers for the other ones, which is zeros. Remember last week? Okay. okay. Watch me do number two. Here we go. Number two. They're already in descending order. The letters we're using is M, okay? So the first constant is going to be, or I'm sorry, coefficient is 1, then 9, then 26, then 29, then 22, and lastly, it's 21. Then our A now, we're looking at our divisor. We have our form we're looking for is x minus a, right? So there's there should be a minus sign, but on this one there's a plus sign. So we know that a plus sign is just like saying m minus a negative 3. So our a here is going to be negative 3, okay? Did you all catch that? Okay, so since we had a plus sign here, a, our, we should have a negative 3, but... Since there's a plus sign, it would be minus negative 3, okay? Because that's the way it works, okay? All right? That's why. Because when it's negative, you keep it positive. It's backwards, okay? Anyways, looking over here, draw a line across. Bring down the first term. 1, bring it down. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 9 plus negative 3, or 9 minus 3, is 6. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. 26 plus, or minus 18 is 8. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. 29 minus 24 is 5. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 22 minus 15 is 7. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. 21 minus 21 is 0. This is called our remainder. The last number is always our remainder. The second number is always what? The constant, right? Then we write down our final answer. We got positive 7. And then the letter we're using is m, right? So it's going to be plus 5m. The next, next term is going to be plus 8m squared. Next term is going to be plus 6m cubed. And the last term is 1, so it's going to be 1m to the... Fourth, you could put a one in the front, but it's redundant. We're just gonna leave it out because we are assuming there's a one there when there's nothing there. And you box your answer. That's it. Any questions? Okay, these are the um, these are the numbers. So let's work on this together. Is there anything underneath this first one here? No. No, bring it down. Right? There's nothing there, which is like there's a zero there. One plus zero is just still one, right? Good. One times six is. 6, good. Negative 12 plus 6? Six. Negative 6, good. Negative 6 times 6 is? Negative 36. 37 minus 36 is? 1. 1 times 6 is? 6, good. Negative 4 times 6, or negative 4 plus 6 is? 2, good. 2 times 6 is? 12, good. And then, negative 12 plus 12 is? Zero. This is Our last number is always called our what? Constant. Remainder. Okay, what's the second number always called over there? Constant. Good, out of girls. Okay, good. So now I want you to write down the answer for me. Go. You got R. Well, I'm sorry, working backwards. You got positive 2 plus 1R, which is just R. Minus 6R squared plus R cubed, or 1R cubed, but we're not going to put the 1 there because that is redundant. We assume that it's there. Okay, number 4, go. Get it. On this one, your answer should have been 5X cubed, right? Oops, sorry. 5X cubed plus 2X squared plus 10X. Um, second period, there's a little too much talking. If you'd want it, if you want to stay here for a break, then keep talking, okay? You can hang out with me and talk all you want. All right? And that's it. That's your answer, okay? So what I'd like you to do is that'll conclude our lesson.